Hey, it's Dr. Melissa. This week we've been talking about gaslighting. And today we're specifically talking about the gaslighting that we're seeing in politics. It is an election year and we haven't even started hitting the ads of all the name calling and mudslinging and that sort of thing. And yet the gaslighting is running rampant and it's important to be able to recognize it. It's important to be able to recognize it in your own personal life because you as a super successful mega star is a magnet. You are a magnet for gaslighters. And it's also important to recognize it in the larger community and in the way people are that are in the way people are responding to what's going on in the world because it is absolutely imperative that you have that awareness and that knowledge in helping to bring the changes that we need in this world. So how are we seeing gaslighting in politics? I'll give you a great example. Here we have a virus which does not care if people are Republican or Democrat. Yet there is this viewpoint by many Republicans that I know that if they were to wear a mask, that they're being sissies or they're wimps or they're living in fear or they're not being a true Republican. That belief system is a form of gaslighting. Here we could have a very educated Republican physician, say, who has evaluated the data, who knows that it is a no-brainer. It is a non-issue. There is nothing to discuss. If we all just wear masks, we will eradicate this. It will not be possible for people to get it. We can go about our business. So it, this, this belief system that's being very heavily <clears throat> levied on them will make them start to doubt the facts that they know to be true or worse yet, make them start to make choices that they wouldn't otherwise. Maybe they know that they need to be wearing a mask, but they're not gonna do that because of the way it would make them look to their friends. And I can tell you, um, my husband and I have been out and we wear masks, and there are definitely people who are looking with judgment and disgust at the mask wearers. We see them everywhere. Whereas, like I said, this virus is not a political issue. It's, a, it's an issue where gaslighting in politics has become the norm. We've seen it also with the Black Lives Matter movement, where people will say Black Lives Matter and take a stand and protest and demand equality for each and every person in this United States. And other people will say, well, they shouldn't be rioting. They shouldn't be protesting. They should go about with their business. I've never seen it, whatever. Those are all extremely subtle forms of gaslighting. Okay, they're trying to change the other person's experience. So the person who is here, who's just lost a loved one, who is suffering the African American or black community that's suffering is being told that their experience doesn't actually exist because this person's never seen it, or it's not that big a deal, or it was hundreds of years ago and they should let it go. They should just forget about it. It's a group and community effort to tell people that their experience doesn't exist. We're seeing this in all aspects of politics these days. We are seeing our own president gaslight like no other. And it's gotta stop because we can't reach a place of collaboration and moving forward together as a united community until we stop gaslighting each other. I really encourage you to look at where this is happening to really explore what gaslighting means. Look at its most subtle and its most obvious forms. Call it out when you see it because it is 
representative of the energy of fear and it will only take us as a country to a place of more division and more polarity instead of transforming us into a collaborative nation that wants to move forward together. If you'd like to take a stand against the energy of fear, against the behavior of gaslighting, not only in your own personal life, but for the nation, for the world, and move forward in a more profound and impactful way in your already incredibly successful life, I encourage you to reach out because this is one of the ways that I love to support people in aligning their mind, body, spirit with their why, connecting to themselves and creating abundance in all areas of life.